right, welcome back to MGM. I am Jimmy. Today I'm going to tell you about my first experience at a convention. It just so happened to be Adepticon 2024. Now overall, this was an amazing experience. The terrain, the miniatures, everything was top notch. I can't believe the amount of people that were there. I really just couldn't believe the amount of people that would be needed in order to set up the event, to support the event. It was really something that was awe inspiring. I really didn't find too many armies that I would not want to take home myself. Everything was beautifully painted. The vendors were there in full support. Everything was incredible. And my journey started on Wednesday where I flew into Chicago. There was a content creators meet and greet that was taking place from four to eight. And it was really cool getting to see a lot of the fellow content creators out there, bearing in mind that not many of them knew who I was and that's perfectly fine. But some of the folks I got to meet and hang out with, Brent from Goobertown Hobbies, Eric from Eric's Hobby Workshop, Jeremy from Black Magic Craft, Lila the Mini Witch, I saw Ash from GMG, and several others. One of the people that made one of the biggest impressions on me uh, throughout the conference was Phil the Glacial Geek. He is just a ball of energy, he's authentic and genuine, and I really enjoyed having the opportunity to meet with him. After hanging out there for a few hours, we went to the Warhammer preview and I've got a bit of a spicy take on this. So just bear in mind, this is my opinion. I'm very respectful of yours and I hope that you'll be respectful of mine. It is a bit of a spicy take. So a lot of people out there said, hey, you know, the Adepticon reveals were bad. They were poorly done, you know, whatever. I, there's so much out there just trying to get clicks and there's so much negativity out there from a lot of people towards games workshop and some of that may be warranted you may feel that way and that's perfectly fine but i i, I don't know how else to say this but for people that are not in the games workshop ecosystem or they just don't buy games workshop miniatures don't paint them whatever games workshop does not care about you and Everybody has an opinion and they, you know, about the pricing and everything else. But for every one that I see complaining about Games Workshop, I saw the opposite in that room. And when the reveals were happening, there were cheering, they were screaming across the entire room. So for every person out there that wants to bring Games Workshop down a peg, there are people out there championing the cause just as much on the other side. And when that was over, it was fascinating because their store opened up right after. And just to see the line of people stroll to their store and pay full price for their products. So it's unfortunate to say, but if you're a person that sees, hey, look, Games Workshop is too expensive and I can't afford it, or if you're just not in their ecosystem in general, they genuinely do not care and they're not gonna make any type of effort to bridge that gap. So I'm one of those people where I say, hey look, play the war games the way that you would like to play them if you want to proxy models. A lot of people like to play 40K in particular because of the lore, but if you have to proxy models, that's perfectly fine. As long as you're not gonna be participating in official Games Workshop tournaments or anything like that, I don't feel like anyone should give you a hard time. Now, I get it. I can feel probably a ton of hate coming at me and dislikes and everything else. I just really felt that I needed to get that off my chest because I feel like that there's a ton of people within this hobby that are, you know, dead set on burning Games Workshop to the ground. Uh, when in fact, there's just as many people on the opposite side that are championing, championing their cause. Um, if you want to get into the ecosystem, then by all means, please do. And if not, then that's fine as well. Do whatever you need to do to hobby your way and don't let anybody tell you any different. Now, while this was going on and even afterwards, there was a narrative RPG style Necromunda setup that was going on and the table looked incredible. This gentleman came in, provided all the terrain and all the miniatures. 
So all you had to do is just show up and say, I want to play. So even if you don't plan to come to Adepticon to play in a tournament or something like that, there's a lot of different games out there where you can just kind of add on and you don't have to bring any miniatures or anything. I saw where a gentleman got his first game of Mordheim as well. Just from being there at the table, somebody supplied him with a warband and they took the time to teach him to play Mordheim. It was absolutely fantastic. Now speaking of Mordheim, there were a handful of folks that got together to play and the boards were nothing short of awe-inspiring. I One of the big things that I took away from Adepticon was just a ton of inspiration and to see some of these Mordheim boards really got my creative juices flowing. Again, these games looked incredible and I think these guys had a really good time playing. Day two on Thursday kicked off the tournaments and there was a ton of those going on. Asmodee or Atomic Mass Games was present and they were running tournaments for all of their major games, whether it is Star Wars Legion or X-Wing or their new game Shatterpoint, as well as Marvel Crisis Protocol. Again, I walked through, I was just absolutely blown away by the way that the tables were set up. All of the terrain was painted and to see some of the miniatures, just absolutely incredible. I wanted to have just about everything in the room in my collection. Over on the other side, Games Workshop, of course, was gearing up for their big tournaments with Warhammer 40k and Kill Team, to name a few, and it was very much the same. I think Adepticon is just well known for having beautiful tables and beautifully painted minis and hats off to all the people playing in these tournaments for taking the time to really get your miniatures painted up to something that was just inspiring and looked incredible. No matter what game you played, there was probably a tournament there for it, whether that be Necromunda, Bolt Action, Flames of War, or anything else. There was a tournament going on at the time, Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game, you name it, there was a tournament going on, and if you did not want to play in a tournament, you could always play in a pickup game or one of the other games, just kind of walk in and see if anybody had provided anything that, like I mentioned before. On day two, we spent the majority of time just walking the vendor hall, and it probably took us four to six hours to actually walk all of the vendor hall, of course, talking with people on the way. One of the first stops that I made in the vendor hall was Relic Blade, and it's a game by Sean Sutter. I've had Relic Blade on my radar for quite some time now, and in looking at the boards and the miniatures are absolutely gorgeous to see in person, I pulled the trigger and bought the Relic Blade starter set. So I'm looking forward to playing some Relic Blade. In the first 20 minutes of walking into the room, I was already $100 in the hole, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be an expensive trip. But I did spend modestly. I really only made one other big purchase like that, so uh, I, I feel like I came out pretty well. But Sean was a, a great guy to meet. Um, you're going to see some Relic Blade content coming on the channel. I already have my miniatures primed and ready to be painted. So I look forward to introducing you to that game and showing you all about it. Now there was just about every vendor that you could possibly imagine there from Warlord Games, Battlefront, obviously Games Workshop, um, Mini Wargaming had a booth set up for Ravage Star. There were a ton of smaller indie games there, but any games manufacturer, Malifaux, Asmodee, they were all represented. There were mat companies, there were dice companies, there were trinket companies, there were pretty much everything that you could imagine. Paint companies, they were all there and representing, and it was just a lot of fun walking around and getting to see all of the little knickknacks that people had brought. And it was, uh, you had to kind of pinch yourself. It was a bit of a sensory overload, really, at first, to see all the people moving around. I described it almost as a gamer's flea market, a very big one. We spent the better part of the second day walking around, taking everything in, checking out tournaments, and stopping by to talk to a, a ton of the vendors and making some purchases here and there. For me, Relic Blade was at the top of my list before I got there. I did go ahead and buy that. And one of the games that I did not really think would jump out at me was Ravage Star by Mini Wargaming. And I was actually fortunate enough to do a demo with Matt uh, from Mini Wargaming. And one, a really stand-up guy. I really enjoyed his patience with us and showing us the game. 
it was he's he's a really an upstanding guy and the game mechanics were really balanced and good as well it felt like a blend of star wars legion and bolt action there's some middle earth mechanics that i noticed in there really rolled up into one war game and it made a lot of sense when you're thinking about buying into a war game these guys have had a lot of experience and after playing Ravage Star, I decided to back their two-person Kickstarter that will be out later this year. There are some late pledges available on that. I'll put a link down below. I'm not affiliated with them in any shape or form, but that is just so you can research this game on your own. One of the things that stood out to me the most was the miniatures. And at looking at them on the computer, you know, with the plastic PVC that they manufacture the product with, it's, it's kind of hard to tell, and in getting them in my hands and looking at them, and they were for sale there, these miniatures looked incredible. I mean, they were gorgeous. They were beautiful. They were painted up on the table, and I could really envision doing that myself. It looked like just an incredible game. So I have decided to back Ravage Star, and I'm really happy that I've made that choice. Now, we did a lot of game demos while we were there. Malifaux, Halo Flashpoint, uh, Free Blades. Uh, if, if there was a demo there, we pretty much did it. Uh, so I got to take a lot in. I got to find out a little more of what I like in war games versus what I don't like. And overall, we had just a great time in that second day. And there was so much going on that it actually spilled over to the third day. We spent a lot of time kind of working our way through the vendors. And when I say we, I had a, a friend there with me that I'd, I'd met. Um, his name was David. And he was kind of my partner in crime. And, and we spent uh, the majority of the week kind of hanging out together and, and visiting folks together. So uh, without him by my side, I really couldn't imagine kind of doing it by myself. But again, depending on how you are, I, it would be easy to make things work. Now, I mentioned paint companies and Army Painter was there. Pro Acryl was there. There were numerous other paint companies there as well. I did get to try out the Fanatics paints from the Army Painter. And I was very impressed with those paints. Um, I did not buy any of them on the spot. I will probably wait for singles because I do have a lot of paint already on hand, but I was impressed overall with the Army Painter Fanatic paints. They, they went down very well. They were extremely consistent when they came out onto your palette. I know that there's a lot of reviews going on about those right now, but my experience with them was overwhelmingly positive, and I think that the Army Painter is doing a great job in, in putting their best foot forward with this new paint line. During the course of last week, I was a bit under the weather. You can probably hear it a little bit in my voice now. I am still on the mend, and uh, I just will, wanted to say that it was one of the better experiences that I've had from a wargaming perspective. I thought the entire thing was just so well put together. And I went in on Wednesday. I ended up leaving earlier on Saturday, so I did not spend the weekend there. I didn't stay for the Golden Demon and all that stuff. That was really cool to check out all the entries and just see what people can do with paints that I just can't seem to do. It was quite an experience. I want to go back next year. I totally want to go back next year, and I want to bring my son with me so we have the full MGM team on hand. I think he would be absolutely blown away by some of the sights and just, you know, uh, meeting a lot of the people. I think it is absolutely incredible. Now, for my hobby haul, I obviously got Relic Blade. I did back Ravage Star from Mini Wargaming on GameFound. And then the rest of what I got was mainly singles to start and fill out warbands that I'm continuing to paint up for Mordheim. Over the course of the next few months, you'll see Cult of the Possessed, the Sisters of Sigmar, as well as the Undead hopefully make an appearance. And I'm really looking forward to continuing to develop that game out in 2024. Overall, I would recommend going to Adepticon if you have the means. It is something pretty special. If you don't leave with anything, you will leave with a ton of inspiration, which can go a long way in our hobby. I'm MGM. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Take care.